Hey, we're here at the Academy Sports Rigs and Techniques CCA Workbench, and we're talking a little bit about blue marlin fishing, something that I really like to do. Absolutely. And Ridge likes to do it too, but he's been, Ridge is Murphy's son. Captain Ridge here, and he's yep. been in San Sal on chasing blue marlins on a big 39-foot contender, which is, yep. you know, a good size center console boat. But when you're fishing for blue marlins from a center console, there's a lot of little uh, obstacles that get in your way, correct? Oh yeah, there's a lot of a uh, lot of lines, a lot of teasers. We troll five hooks and four teasers. What's the what's the what's the hardest part about? trying to catch a blue marlin from a center you know, console. Doing it out of a center console, you don't get the elevation that you would get from a bigger boat. Right. And so with that, you we have try, a hard time seeing them. Yeah, it's a hard time seeing them. And that is really the whole entire challenge because once you see them, it's a little bit easier, as you know. Yeah, yeah. If anybody, anytime you see a blue marlin before he eats, your chances of catching him go way up. Yeah. And when you're sitting down low in a center console boat, that can become a problem if you don't have an upper station. Absolutely. Now, I, I see that you've got a lot of, you, you said you trolled four teasers and five lines. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of these these uh, teasers you got here, like this one here. What makes this really good for the center console? You know, with the center console, you don't have, you're limited with space. You don't yeah. have a bunch of room. So Hooker so that's Electric a collapsible. makes a collapsible dredge. And we put this off the back cleat. Um, you don't need LPs, you don't need, I mean, we'd like to have them out of the wash, but with this, it's, it allows you to have it and um, still be able to pull bigger stuff like you would on a bigger boat. So do you hang this from the cleat or? Some guys hang them off the cleat. Right. Other guys, like we, what we do is we have them it's where- It's amazing how that thing all It just collapses down. down, we can put it away. But what we do That's is awesome. we have them on, on uh, rods that are about three, three feet long and it gets it out of the wash. And then not only that, we have our squid chain that we run on a bigger rod and that keeps it outside the wash, but inside the, sh the short halyard. Now we use those big, a lot of times when we were fly fishing, we'd use those eight foot teaser rods so that we could jerk the whole lure out of the water. Because when a fish comes up and he really wants to eat that teaser, if you let him catch the teaser a lot of times, he doesn't come back. Absolutely. Although, you, when you say that, nobody can keep a teaser away from a blue marlin when he wants to eat it. Yeah. So sometimes he's gonna catch it. And, when when and, he's mad, he's mad. Right, one good thing about this dredge that you picked up here, I noticed that it has, has these kind of flippy flappy uh, mud, flaps. mud flaps on here. And this one here has the, has the tails. Now these are really good for center console boats again because they don't pull as hard. No. If you have a three-tiered drags like, like we used in a lot of other places in Costa Rica and around the world with a ton of big heavy mullets on it, you make a thing that weighs a lot. And then when you're trying to pull you. that big thing through the water, it's putting a lot of tension on either your outriggers mm -hmm. or your or your uh, LPs or even your gunnels or, or whatever you've got those big Absolutely. heavy things tied to. Now, what what are your what's your favorite baits to be pulling when you're out there? We like to pull lures, so we pull a lot of the Andy Moy lures, J boys and plungers. We put two J boys on the longs and two plungers on the shorts. What what is your With what do you like to pull the lures for? Why do you, why are you pulling lures? Because they get bit. <laughs> Whatever gets every, bit, everybody got to keep putting it. Everybody out likes I... to pull baits these days. Everybody's using a lot of ballyhoos and those dredges, and they're oh. going really slow. Yeah. And if you're in Texas and you're trying to do this for the first time, that would be the way I would not try to do it. Yeah. I would try if I was in Texas and I was doing this for the first time on. I would try to use just like you were taking like four lures yeah. and go as fast as my stuff would let me go Absolutely. because you know you're not getting 10 bites out of sailfish a day or to even 10 mar blue marlin bites a day. Oh, when and with the ballyhoo, it, you don't have to drop back. You know, with the lures, you're coming tight. Correct. It, it just increases your chances of when he does come up. And you're in a charter boat situation. Yeah. So your anglers aren't Our guys really all aren't that sitting great. there with their thumbs on the rods. They're waiting for it to come up. A lot of times they're not even facing the lures. Right. And the, lure, the lures take a lot. We take advantage of yeah, it. Yeah, the lures take a lot of that uh, angler skill away. He's either going to be there or he's not. And the really good guys are about 70% and the rest of us are about 50. Yeah. So, yeah, he's a really good thing. To, well, I really appreciate you spending the time. Absolutely. And uh, hopefully we can go out there and we'll get, get on it. some of those blue marlins yeah. on the little center console. Absolutely. Did you feel like you were talking to Rick Murphy over there? Because uh, I saw a proud a good papa job. right here. <laughs> good, good job, job. guys.